Welcome back. I'm Jay. We got Steve behind the camera. We are on location today at Clemson University in the Packaging Science Lab where we're talking to some of the PhD candidates about a new toy they just got. It's a pneumatic ram designed to hit football helmets and we're going to go over some of the testing that they do for our face masks for us at Green Gridiron to make sure you are safe. Helmet manufacturers have a similar ram that they use in their labs when they're designing helmets and we're going to give you a look at this from a little bit different angle, really kind of get into the nitty gritty of how this thing works. So if you're a fan of football helmets and you really want the sport to be safer, this is something that you're going to want to take a look at so you know what goes into designing the helmets that you're wearing or your kids are wearing on the field. Hey guys, my name is Davis Farrell. I'm a PhD student here in the Department of Bioengineering. I'm here today to show you a little bit about our linear impactor. So what we got here is our computer, which basically controls this entire system. And all these cords here that looks like a chemistry lab, all it is is an organization of our compressed air and the power. And so we actually have the source from our air uh, and the power that comes from the ceiling. Um, but it all feeds down here to a computer that uh, tells the system how much air, uh, how much pressure we are going to want for each impact. So here we have the tank that holds all of our compressed air for each impact that we're going to do. So if we want to impact at maybe five meters per second, we are going to compress this tank to a certain PSI, maybe about 20 PSI, which then puts certain amount of air in here that allows us to fire at that speed. We also have a release valve that allows us to reset the piston on each impact. Right here in front of me, we have the controller that's the user interface for deciding what we're gonna do with each impact. And so with this controller, we then put the pressure, which corresponds to a certain speed, and we're able to record velocity of the impact and different metrics that we're trying to keep track of. So as you can see here, we have a linear impacting rod as well as an impacting face. And these are accelerated by the piston that actually accelerates this impacting rod and impacting head towards our head form at whatever speed or pressure we have inside that tank. So here's where we're actually going to be recording the impact either with a camera or with an accelerometer inside the head form. And so this impacting rod and impacting head hits the head form or the helmet, whatever we have configured. And we record the acceleration either linearly or rotationally. Hi, I'm Tessa Gagne. I'm a master's student in packaging science and I'm here at the CHIP lab at Clemson University. And I'm gonna show you what the RAM looks like when it's fired. So because of this test, we can get, first of all, the speed from, because we had pressure and now we have the speed. And from our sensor, we can get rotational and linear acceleration, we can get severity index, and we can get peak Gs. And we also can tell how well the face mask fared physically from this test. We've been working with Green Gridiron for about six years and uh, really started with, uh, with a common interest in developing uh, test methods for the evaluation of face masks. Uh, there was an interest green gridiron that was that was a big part of their business and it was an area of research that we saw opportunity on. A lot of work has been done with helmets and, and testing and evaluating helmets. A lot of work done on the cushion systems inside those helmets but very little work if any done focused on the face mask and if you face it if you're playing the game right uh, head you don't hit what you don't see and so a lot of those impacts happen in and around the face mask region and so we saw some real opportunity there. I got a PhD in mechanical engineering here at Clemson years ago. I'm an associate professor in packaging science, but I also hold a degree in, in bioengineering. And so I see some of my work in that interface between packaging science and bioengineering, where the product we're trying to protect is the head. If you think of the helmet as a package for the human head, then it's that per protective interface between a harmful environment and a, and a fragile, fragile product. And so the basic principles of, 
of shock absorption and energy dissipation. You know, these, these principles that are, are important in packaging printers, um, there's a, we, they, they all translate into protecting a, a head from, from kind of on-field impacts that we see in football. And so the equipment uh, that we have in our lab, we've built up uh, you know, a variety of, of different pieces of equipment to in, designed to impart different types of shocks to uh, a helmeted head form. So you know that, that linear impact ram is, is our newest toy in the, in the dynamics lab and really was made possible uh, for, for four players. Uh, packaging science, uh, bioengineering, and Dr. John Desjardins at, in bioengineering. We've had a partnership really since the beginning with, with our work with Green Gridiron about six years ago. And, um, and so uh, packaging science, bioengineering, mechanical engineering, and actually an internal grant, we were able to get some funding from Clemson University to, uh, to purchase, you know, which is really a, a significant piece of equipment for us. Uh, we see some real opportunities from a research standpoint, uh, both in the, in the fields of packaging science and bioengineering and, and mechanical engineering. And in the overlap space, of those, there's lots of sport applications uh, of a device like this that, uh, that we're excited about researching. So there's more to come. Big thanks to Clemson University, Dr. Bat, Davis, Tess, and everybody here for letting us come and take over the lab for a couple hours so we can shoot this video. We are going to be coming out here again in the future, so please leave your comments below. What questions do you want us to ask them the next time we're here doing a follow-up video? because we're really excited about this and we can't wait to actually see some hard data uh, that we can share with everybody. So like, subscribe, click the notification bell for more videos like this. Until next time, cheers.